Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about face mapping. If you've never heard of face mapping, it's actually part of traditional Chinese medicine, and it involves studying the location of like acne breakouts, redness, irritation on the face, and trying to pinpoint an underlying cause. It correlates location with different organ systems or different health problems. While there's no science to support facial mapping, it's not complete BS. Acne breakouts do occur in certain locations and do underscore different types of acne. And then of course you have non-acne type breakouts, facial bumps, due to other skin conditions that can happen in specific areas. When we're talking about making a diagnosis of a skin condition, location is key, actually. You can rule out a lot of diagnoses from the get-go simply by the location of the skin lesions. For example, there are no pores or hair follicles on the palms or soles. So if somebody comes in with red bumps on the palms and soles, you automatically know that it is not acne. Acne does not occur on those locations, it can't. If you look at the map very carefully, they correlate certain locations with different um, organ systems. Aside from the endocrine system, I would say that's a bit of a stretch because acne specifically, it's a skin condition primarily rather than a secondary manifestation of an underlying medical problem. And of course there are skin lesions that happen on the face that may be um, part of an underlying medical problem. I noticed they mentioned renal disease. There are certain hereditary diseases where you have problems with the kidneys and you also have specific skin lesions. The skin lesions, however, don't cause the renal disease. It's part of an overall syndrome. For example, there's a condition called tuberous sclerosis. They get these red bumps on the face. It's actually often misdiagnosed as acne. They can have problems with their kidneys, but it's not like acne and kidneys are one and the same thing. And if somebody comes in the office, we make a diagnosis of acne, we're not gonna check their kidneys um, unless we're gonna start a medication that is gonna be processed through the kidneys, then you know we may wanna check their renal function. But yeah, I mean, we don't really check different organ system functions when somebody comes in with acne. Probably the most relevant observation on this facial mapping is the jawline and chin area with, I think they say reproductive, but we'll just say endocrine deals with your hormones. Hormonal acne notoriously shows up in women on the jawline and the chin area. Maybe because the pores in that location are even more sensitive to the hormones that lead to increased oil production. And in women, this tends to be a problem into adulthood and varies with your menstrual cycle, hormonal acne. And we see that in women, we see that in uh, women with polycystic ovary syndrome, and then as far as the hormones, aside from your reproductive hormones, there's also something called insulin-like growth factor that can be due to processed sugary foods. So if you have a diet that is rich in like a lot of processed foods that spike your blood sugar, then that can contribute to acne flares. Also, skim milk dairy has been associated with similar breakouts, maybe more common in the jaw and chin area. I have a video all about diet for clear skin. I'm gonna link that down below in the description box. But foods definitely do play a role in acne breakouts because they can influence our hormone profiles and downstream of that is gonna to lead to more oil production, more clogging of the pores and more acne. And again, for whatever reason, the jaw and chin area are more likely to be affected than other areas of the face. Aside from diet, you also have stress feeding into those hormonal pathways, stress hormones. A lot of people get breakouts in between their eyebrows. Is that due to some organ system? No, but a lot of people suffer from a condition known as seborrheic dermatitis, where you get these red patches with a greasy scale. It's very inflammatory, and that inflammation can lead to breakouts mostly in between the eyebrows. It's related to dandruff and actually using an anti-dandruff shampoo as a face wash in those areas can help cut down on those breakouts. You just lather it to the area or you can use it to the entire face actually. Let it sit on the skin for a few minutes and then rinse it off. Another reason to get breakouts in between the eyebrows is plucking, waxing, removing the hair can cause some irritation around the hair follicles and that irritation leads to more inflammation and little breakouts. Breakouts on the cheeks can be seen in people who wear a lot of makeup, especially blush. It's thought perhaps that the red dyes in the blush are responsible, but really any type of makeup. 
The way you apply your makeup can influence that. If you use beauty blenders or brushes and you kind of pound the makeup in, that can actually cause a lot of inflammation and irritation. Not cleaning your makeup brushes regularly also can be a culprit because they can harbor bacteria that you then introduce into your skin that leads to more irritation, inflammation, and breakouts. Don't forget your pillowcase. If you're not washing your pillowcase consistently, it can harbor your skin oils plus bacteria, cause some irritation. If you're a side sleeper or stomach sleeper, let me know in the comments, do you actually speak on a cell phone holding it up to your face? I, I feel like most people put it on speaker mode or use their earbuds or whatever. I'm not seeing people actually hold the phone up to their face anymore, but that can be a, a source, especially if you don't go on the phone for a long time. So keep your cell phone clean, You know, wipe it off with an alcohol wipe from time to time to remove bacteria and things. People deal with breakouts around their mouth. It's more often a condition called perioral dermatitis, which actually is related more to rosacea than it is acne. You get these little pimples that can be pretty painful and kind of sting, burn. They're very uncomfortable. It can happen around the mouth. It can happen actually not only around your mouth, but around your nose and around your eyes. People who use uh, steroid creams inappropriately can develop this very easily. Toothpaste is a major culprit in perioral dermatitis, those little breakouts around the mouth. The flavorants in toothpaste and uh, the detergents in toothpaste may end up being too irritating around the mouth. Um, it's actually the kids' strawberry toothpaste that are the best. For whatever reason, the strawberry flavor is mild enough that it, if it, you know, it doesn't seem to be problematic for people with perioral dermatitis. But it's a cinnamon, mint, spearmint flavors that, I don't know, the, the ingredients in the flavorants are really irritating on the skin plus the surfactant used to, to dissolve is, is SLS. They use a high, high amount of SLS to dissolve like the fluoride. And that can, that can definitely put you at risk for perioral dermatitis or a flare if you're predisposed. Breakouts on the forehead, along the hairline, the sides of the face, hair care products. A long time ago, the term pomade acne was coined for this because at the time people were using greasy pomades. We were seeing this a lot, breakouts on the forehead. But honestly, it can be any hair care product, any hair styling product, blowout creams, gels, mousses, leave-in conditioners, styling creams, anything that you put on your hair, uh, especially things that are thick and intended to be moisturizing can end up transferring to the skin and causing breakouts. And you may also see this as breakouts on the back of the neck and the upper back, depending on the, how you style your hair and the length of your hair. So as you can see, you can develop acne in certain locations and it may be telling you something about what is causative. So the idea of face mapping, it's not complete BS, but if you actually look at the face map, the organ systems that they correlate problems with, you don't really have to worry about. For example, poor digestion doesn't really cause acne breakouts. And these different organ systems, they're not causative of these skin problems. You know, we're not gonna see a patient for the first time who has acne and do this complete medical workup, making sure that their gallbladder is functioning, their intestines are functioning. That just doesn't make sense. Uh, these diseases, Acne in particular, as well as other diseases like rosacea, seborrheic dermatitis, there's a strong underlying genetic component. You know, you're more likely to have these if, like your family members did. And of course they're aggravated by things like stress, certain skincare products, your hormones, and your diet. Comment below, have you heard of facial mapping? I hope this video was helpful, and if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.